Hi everybody, this is uh, John back with another model in box review. Um, for those people out there that have no idea what this helicopter is, this is one of the most heavily utilised helicopter designs um, that have ever come into service with the Army Air Corps in the United Kingdom. This is of course the Westland Aerospatial SA-341G Gazelle helicopter. This is an Army Air Corps variant. Um, a late production variant with an upturned uh, jet pipe. The earlier models just had a standard pokey out the back jet pipe. Um, I don't think they actually updated any of the engines on these aircraft. They just modernised the um, the exhaust system. Um, but the camo pattern on this aircraft is matte green and matte um, medium grey. And it's been coated in a sort of lacquer to make the aircraft a little bit shiny. Um, the aircraft has actually undergone quite a number of different camouflage patterns. The prototype for the Army Air Corps was actually finished in green and brown. But by the time the Gazelle entered service, um, it was finished in a matte black and matte green camouflage pattern scheme. And then they went over to this particular scheme pattern. Um, and then eventually they were all green. Um, by around about 2012, they ended up being all green. Um, the Gazelle, I've always found the Gazelle quite a nice, attractive looking helicopter. And I've always liked the look of the helicopter. And for me personally, I've, I've always thought it was quite a nice looking helicopter. And there were actually um, an aerobatic display team. Of gazelles from the Royal Navy and they were actually appropriately called the the Royal Naval Sharks and I say appropriately because the gazelle from the side looks a little bit like a shark it's got a very sort of shark like tail assembly which houses that Finestron um, anti-torque fan at the back and the helicopter had a very distinctive high pitch whine to the helicopter when it flew and um, it was very distinctive and easy to recognize. Anyway, the model we're doing an inbox review on is the ubiquitous Airfix 72nd scale uh, Westland Aerospatial Gazelle. And it first appeared on the market in a Type 4C blister pack in 1973. Now, the interesting thing about the 1973 release um, and also scalemates state this, is that the aircraft is actually um, from a gazelle which served in the Army Air Corps in 1973. The interesting thing about this is, is that the Army Air Corps didn't take possession of the gazelle until 1974. So where Airfix or scalemates got that idea from, or that information from, I have no idea. But I, I do, th do think... Um, that the Army Air Corps may have gotten hold in 1973 of the prototype SA-341G helicopter, which obviously was also lent to the Royal Navy as well as the RAF. The Navy and the RAF both had their own distinctive versions of it, differing mainly in avionics and radio gear. Um, but the helicopter, the Navy ones and the RAF ones were, were brightly coloured, red, white and midnight blue. Um, and they were very, very vibrantly coloured, but the army ones obviously were matte green and matte black predominantly. Anyway, the 4C kit packaging type came out in 1973 with this blister pack, and this is actually the, an example of the model that I've got a copy of here, which is quite handy. I always like to see if I can get a hold of an early release kit, preferably a, an initial release kit if I can. And touch wood, I, you know, I've been quite lucky over the, over the years. Um, so that's the 73 release. In 1978, the helicopter was, this particular helicopter was released in what we call the Type 6 uh, planetoid label. This was one of the latter uh, boxings released by the original Airfix company, um, prior to them being taken over by General Mills Limited in 1982, I believe. Um, but this this kit it was interesting because this particular boxing, even with a planetoid label, was re-released over three or maybe four consecutive different years, um, and there was no difference in the boxing whatsoever. It was just just they reintroduced it on the original boxing. This is a Type 4D when Series One and Series Two boxings were all released 
um, in boxes. That's 1978, we go through to 1979 and this Type 4D box again appeared on the market. Um, I think they changed the serial number of the kit. So the original serial number, I'll just have a quick look at this. The original serial number of the kit was um, 010595 and this one is 61059. Um, so they obviously changed the serial number of the kit when it was released in 1979. Then in 1981, the kit was re-released again. Um, but this is quite interesting because when General Mills got a hold of the company in 1982, there was an awful lot of stock um, of Airfix boxings and kits in, in the warehouse that needed to be sold. And General Mills, under the uh, marketing of um, Palatoy, they actually released an awful lot of these kits that were in the original boxings but these were as released as late as 1981 and they had another new serial number in the guise of 9-61059 um, so another new serial number there for that but that's still the same type 6 box which was uh, you know interesting there too 1981 goes through to 1983 and we have the Palatoy uh, blueprint style boxing of the Airfix series 1 Gazelle you can see how the model is how it will look when it's finished which is it's quite nice and there there is um a massive issue that i have with this airfix kit and we'll go through it in the conclusions when i read the gun felt later but you can see how the model will build up and it is quite an attractive little kit it's not a bad looking overall finish you know it, it can be built quite nice that's the 1983 release on the Panatoy blueprint packaging then in 1988 uh, when Borden Incorporated had hold of Airfix they were released under the marketing of Humbrol and this is the first um, boxings that Humbrol offered and I call these the louvred boxes where they have loos on the side of the box in various different colours um, and the, the gazelle was released with yellow louvres on the side um, it's actually called the Westland Aerospatial SA341 Gazelle now. Before it was just called the SA341 Gazelle. Um, and new artwork here from the, the original artwork obviously changed during the transition period from uh, Palatoy when Palatoy releasing them on the uh, blueprint packaging. That's 1988. Then in 1989... The original artwork was released again i think this is something to do with some of the boxing that was still stored up in in the warehouses these were released through a company called kiko not quite sure where kiko uh, marketed their products from but this was a uh, packaging similar to the um 1978 stroke 79 releases but without the planetoid logo they had the standard Airfix uh, Sphere red, white and black logo. But Kiko, uh, I really am not quite sure exactly where Kiko sold their models. But looking at that, that says Modelo Plastico Paramontar. That sounds to me like maybe Italian or maybe Spanish. It looks Italian to me. Um, it's quite interesting. Well, that's a Kiko release in 1989. And then in 1989, Heller, who obviously under the marketing of um, Humbrol, who Heller were part of the Humbrol group, Heller had access to the Airfix Gazelle mould and they added a sprue which incorporated some of the additional stores. Um, and I think they also had um, an additional window on the upper section, the upper decking of the, of the cockpit there. You can see it with the, the tow missile launcher sights that go on the top. You can see them here. And the, the helicopter was marketed as a 172nd scale SA-342M Gazelle. Now in the French army, the Army de Terre, the Gazelle was actually um, upgraded with an uprated Astazo engine. And it was... Um, it was ID'd as an SA-342M Gazelle. Um, with ordnance and the aircraft could fire tow missiles in the anti-tank role. Um, the French also used the 341 in the liaison and training role, but that aircraft was not uh, able to carry tow missiles. The interesting thing about the Army Air Corps variants 
is that they were used in the liaison and training role, but they also had the accommodation uh, fittings to, to attach tow missiles and even 7.62 mini, mini guns on the side of the aircraft's airframe, and they did use those um, quite often. Uh, so nice an 89 Heller release for the Gazelle. Then in 1990, um, this was uh, one of the last release boxes from Heller uh, before McGuinness and uh, sorry Maguire um, got a hold of uh, Airfix in 1992, I believe. And the the Heller Group, sorry, the Humbrol Group introduced what was called the Flying Hours on their boxes. Um, also interesting is to note that the camouflage pattern has changed from green and black to green and grey for the Army Air Corps variant, which is, I think, quite nice. Now, just in case you're interested, um, you can actually buy sheets of Dayglow. Um, and you, you've been been able to buy sheets of Dayglow for years and years and years. But you can also use Dayglow paint to paint um, the Dayglow panels on this on this particular model um, if you so wished and I always found a good tip before you apply day glow paint um, is to paint the square sections of where you want the day glow paint to go on in some sort of desert sand color because it really does take the day glow pigment really well and brings the color out really well but that was 1990 that was the last boxing from Heller of the FX Westland Aerospatial SA-341 Gazelle. Then in 1990 also, sorry, this this isn't the last boxing, but it is it is like the last boxing. They just reiterated the placement of the flying hours on the box, but it was basically exactly the same box as the one you had before, um, and it came out in the same year, later in the same year. Then in 1994, 1994 saw ownership from Maguire's, and I think it was, was it Maguire and McGuinness or Maguire and Guinness or something? Um, and this aircraft, the, the, the air helicopter was released in boxings left over from um, the latter Heller boxings. Um, but they introduced a skill levels box panel. Um, I can't remember what type boxings these were. I think they were, they were either type nines. Or were they Type 10s? I can't remember exactly. But the Gazelle helicopter is marked as a type, uh, a skill level 2. Um, and I would sort of go along with that because the Gazelle, as Series 1 Airfix kits go, it's not an easy build. It's quite a complicated interior and fitting of the fuselage. Not terribly difficult. Um, and the, the rotors, obviously, you've got to get all that to go around. The Fenestom fan also rotates. But the Gazelle had... Um, a very very weak skid assembly to model and uh, it, it was always quite tricky to get those skids to to hold the weight of the helicopter up you had to take the weight off the skids to allow them to dry before you put the weight back on that was 1994's release and then we go into 1995 and you have the same kit with the skill box but this time set into a starter set and you had two acrylic paints from the humble range and a brush and a tube of cement. Now the tube of cement on this starter set is okay. The rest of it, and that brush in particular, is terrible. Um, I think they were man-made bristles. Really, really awful brush. I have had a couple of those. Tried to use them. I had to throw them away. But that's just the way it is. 1995 goes through to 1996. And another release from Heller of the Gazelle SA-342M. This is the tow-armed um, Gazelle helicopter utilising the airfix sprue with a additional sprue produced from Heller. Um, and that was released in 1996. Interesting to note that in 1996, we got a price tag here of, I think that is uh, 42 francs. Um, I can't remember how much 42 francs was in, in the mid 90s. But that seems to me to be quite a bit, quite a lot of money for a, for a small Series 1 helicopter. But it's 1996 anyway, and the Heller release for the Gazelle SA-342M um, Heller kit. Then in 1997, this particular kit from Heller was released as a rapid starter kit. Now I quite like the Heller's rapid starter kits because they use proper humble enamel paints. 
I'm not sure about that tube of glue, but the brush on this set is really nice. I've used this style of brush quite a few times, and usually it comes with a different tube of glue, but I'm guessing that that tube of glue is just humble cement, just like normal, and it should be okay. But these paints are really, really good. Um, and if you have one of these in your stash, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be afraid to use all of the stuff that comes with it in the box. 1997 there goes through to 1998, and we have this unusual graphic for um for a model kit where airfix went into a completely different style of boxing where they utilized uh, a superimposed image of the original artwork from prior to this and superimposed it onto what can only be described as a gazelle orbiting a planet <laughs> never really understood the the idea behind this um but this this company at this point in time um, was still owned by Maguire and McGuinness, uh, which was quite interesting. Anyway, 1998 goes through to 2005, and we're coming up to the last boxings prior to Hornby Hobbies takeover. The Hornby Hobbies took the company over in 2006, and I do remember having a few of these boxes, and I found them quite squishy in your stash. Um, they didn't hold their shape particularly well, but the stuff inside the box was okay. Apart from these acrylic paints, I could never get on with these acrylic paints. I never found them that good at all. But that was a starter set of the Airfix Gazelle in 2005. And then in 2005, Hella also released, again, a starter set of the SA342M Gazelle with the tow missile set. Um, and the original brush, And although I think they've improved the brush on this particular set, uh, and the acrylic paints that went in there as well. So that was 2005 for Hella, And then in 2009, the first release from Hornby Products Limited, new artwork. Um, they're showing you the helicopter should be painted using Day Glow. You don't have to paint the helicopters with Day Glow, um, but it's definitely green and grey camouflage, um, which are the modern colours for the Gazelle. Well, some of the Gazelles that are still in use now, although a lot of them are just green now. Um, but that was a 2009 release. These these accessories here, the brushes, are really nice. Acrylic paints. These acrylic paints and the the stuff that was released from Hornby don't seem to be that bad. And the Humbrol um, Poly Cement doesn't seem to be that bad either. So that was 2009. 2010, they um, revised the accessories that came in the starter set, but it was exactly the same model that you got in the in the boxing. Um, but this poly cement is really good. Not again. I'm not so sure about these humble paints, but they, I think they're print. I think they're okay. You know, the the new humble paints released from Hornby seem to be okay, and these brushes are superb. Very very good quality brushes. 2010 goes through to 2012. I think this is the last time the Gazelle was released. Um, again, as a starter set, I haven't seen a release as a standalone kit. Um, and again, they, they went, they resorted back to the original glue and uh, paints from that, that set as well. So that was 2012, the last boxing from the Gazelle. We'll leave you a nice image here of an older generation um, SA341 Gazelle AH Mark I that was served in the Army Air Corps. Um, just a, a, an interesting point uh, about myself. Um, where I'm originally from, which is uh, a town called Andover in Hampshire, um, Andover was about seven miles from Middle Wallop Airdrome, where the Army Air Corps housed their helicopter flight. Um, and all operations, even today, all the operations from the Army Air Corps are usually, um, they're usually uh, all staged out of Middle Wallop. And it is the main training center, even for the um, Apache, Longbow Apache helicopters. They all fly out of Middle Wallop. And I saw an awful lot of helicopters based at Middle Wallop, right through from the early Bell 47s to the Skeeters and the Gazelles, the Scouts. Uh, the Gazelle actually replaced the um, the Bell 47 in the liaison and training role. Um, and when they first entered service, they looked like this. They very much looked like this. Um, and they, I'm still tempted to do one of these, although I might do... Um, I might do a green and grey one 
because some of the gazelles are still flying at Little Wallop, right? There are actually some of the older generations, but they've just been repainted and upgraded. So anyway, that's the uh, that's a nice image of a gazelle that was based at Middle Wallop. That helicopter was circa sort of 1982, 83, around about the Falklands time. We'll just pan the camera down and we'll have a look at this particular kit that we've got here. I haven't opened this box um, because I know what's in it. I've built a couple of these gazelle helicopters before. Um, this is the initial... 1973 release and the type 4c packaging the blister packaging and on the back you've got the paint guide quite nice and easy to follow there's only one version of the, uh, one helicopter you can model from this which is interesting there you go little wallop british army 1973 and then on the when you flip the uh the instruction leaflet open it's all laid out in six different stages and you can see it's got quite a detailed interior with two pilots that will be an observer and a pilot for the Army Air Corps Gazelle. Um, quite a detailed interior. And you've got that Fenestune blade, which um, does rotate on this kit in Section 2. Section 3 is the Astazo. It's a Turbomeca Astazo engine that went into the Gazelle and the gearbox in the front there. And then you've got the main rotor head. Got something to say about Part 22, because I think that's really just... And a way in which Airfix could ensure that the rotor rotated securely because that little disc is nowhere to be seen on a Gazelle rotor hub. Anyway, section five, you're basically marrying the rest of the aircraft together with the cabin windows um, and the little stabilizers and the engine unit and drive shaft for the Fenestune blade. And then in section six, you're fitting the rest, remainder of the aerials and the skids quite easy. No real problems there whatsoever. You've got a bit of um, general instructions here um, and also some stats and history on the helicopter there, which is quite nice. Three different languages, obviously, French, German and English. And in the top, you've got the key codes, cement, transparency and do not cement. Quite self-evident there. And then you've got the colour code and the paint guide and the decal application guide there. And all the call outs are all they're all laid out nice and easy so what i'll do i'll just quickly pop this blister pack as i said i haven't opened this kit um, but i'm going to pop the blister pack just so we can uh, have a look at what's in here as i said before i have actually built a couple of gazelles before um, and it is a nice little kit to build it's quite a nice it can be tricky in places, but it is quite a nice little kit to build. Um, there are a couple of things that you need to be aware of when you build this kit. Um, and I'll go through those in a minute. We'll have a look at the transfers in a minute. And the screw, cockpit glazing, and the stand. You always got a stand in these kits, which was quite nice. So before we go into the into the the parts let's just have a look at the decals the decals they're nothing to write home about really there's not a huge amount to them i'm not going to take that dust sheet off um, but you can see they weren't fantastic decals in the 70s were they um, but they were adequate you know they they did the job you wanted them to do anyway each kit came with a stand and this one has the airfix logo on it in the scroll shape so these predated 1973 originally. They probably just included them because that's where the mould came from. Interesting thing is that nowadays Hornby Productions, Hornby Products Limited rather, they do release stand sets and they're exactly the same stands as these, but you've got to pay for them now in the in the 70s and actually in, into the late 70s. you got stands with every kit you ever bought that was an aircraft or a helicopter and uh, they were free. Anyway. Transparency sprue. This sprue, um, the first thing I notice about it is it's really clear. It's incredibly clear, actually. Um, very nicely detailed. The framing on those side doors, nicely detailed. Very impressed with that. That's quite nice. And the, the forward dome, hoping to get that into view. There we go forward dome is nicely detailed as well i think that'll paint up really nice very impressed with that 
and you can see my fingerprints through that dome even though it's heavily curved you know you can see you'll see all the detail inside this kit no problem whatsoever we'll go through the sprues and then we'll have a look at the um the fuselage halves afterwards just a couple of things i want to point out really because a lot of these parts are pretty much of a muchness but there's some nice fine detailed parts there can you see that little cyclic pitch lever pilot seats the central console for the dashboard that's nicely reproduced as well quite impressed with that there's the fenestron blade gazelle has one of those instead of a tail rotor um these skids are quite heavily bent gonna have to it, i mean they will jig in all right when you when you glue them into place but i might have to warm that up with hot warm water and get it to bend properly you've got the turbo mecha astazo turbo shafts the engines there and the exhaust pipes quite small engines on the helicopter it's interesting but that's that and then you've got the second sprue which has some quite interesting parts on them the first thing i've noticed is that you've got these two guys from airfix the airfix pilots these are the same pilots that flew the scout um can i get that into view a little bit better there we go these are the same guys that you got in the scout um I don't know, maybe they just walk from one helicopter to another. You've got the rear bulkhead with the seats. They're quite nicely reproduced as well. The seat foam padding is, you know, the fabric look on that is quite nice. Quite like that. You've got some rivet detail on the stabilators. See that quite nicely. Uh, the rotor blades aren't much to worry about, really. But this is the, um, this is the main rotor hub. That's quite nicely detailed, isn't it? It's not bad. Yeah, quite like that. So that's that's quite nice. Um, we won't look at that fuselage half. We'll just look at this fuselage half. But well, actually, I will show you a little tiny bit of this because the fenestrum blade you can see at the back there. That's the main hub that you glue the fenestrum blade to with the bearing behind it to hold it into place and you know it's quite nice it's quite nicely detailed quite faithfully reproduced and then you've got the the main airframe and you can see on the main airframe it's not festooned in rivets there are a few rivets around the doors and the windows the rest of the airframe isn't too bad it's quite clean there's a few rivets on that rear fin you can see them there there are a few there um the actual parts are not overdone they're quite they're quite nicely detailed the interior isn't much to write home about but uh, there you go but the detail on the on the fuselage size is quite nice and crisp um, and you'd really want to use thin paint or spray them to get that detail up you know it'd be quite nice so anyway, what I'm going to do quickly now is I'll just put this stuff back into this blister And then we can have go through the gump um, on this particular model. The options and costs are going to be quite interesting as well because I haven't gone bananas on the options and costs with the gazelle because there aren't actually that many. <laughs> and you'll see in a minute what I mean by that. By there aren't that many, but there aren't there aren't that many at all. I'll just show you that kit there. You can have a look at it, and we'll go through the. The information on this kit. The model we're actually doing an inbox review on today is the Airfix Westland Aerospatial SA341 Gazelle. The kit is Series 1 with a serial number of 01059-5. Release date was 1973 on a Type 4C packaging and it's moulded in 172nd scale. There are decals for Westland Aerospatial SA341 Gazelle AH Mark 1 serial number XW844 serving the Army Air Corps and 671 Squadron Training Unit at Middle Wallop in Hampshire, 1973. There are 34 parts on two green plastic sprues and six parts on one clear plastic sprue 
totaling 40 parts in total. The dimensions of the kit are roughly five and a quarter inches long by five and a half inches rotor diameter um, with a fuselage width of 0.75 inches wide so it's just under an inch wide by two inches high on its skids now the options and costs what i've actually done is i've incorporated all of the different scales and options so there aren't that many um, but what there are is quite interesting in 1100 scale fujimi do an sa 341b f and g gazelle these kits retail for between four and 24 pound not particularly good in quality. Hella also did an SA341 Gazelle in 1100 scale, and that kit retails for anything from £5 to £20. This kit, again, is not fantastic quality, but it's, in my opinion, it's better than the Fujimi offering. And Rosskompf also did an SA341H Gazelle, and that kit retails for anything between 10 and 60 quid. If you can get it for £10, you're doing really well. Um, but I have seen it sell for 60 and this kit again is probably on a par with the Heller model. Now the Heller kit has been reboxed by two companies, one of them um, under the guise of Heller itself as a Heller Cadet range of the Gazelle. This is a reboxed Heller kit of course for 5 to £15 and a company called Model X do a reboxed Heller kit of the SA341 Gazelle and that model retails for about 7 to £10. Now in 72nd scale Really, you've only got a one-track pony, and that's the Airfix kit um, of the SA341 Gazelle. That kit retails for anything between £5 and £22. Airfix also released it from Kiko and Airfix Lodella. They're all Airfix reboxed models of the SA341 Gazelle, and no pricing is available for those. But for £13 to £21, Heller did a rebox under the guise of the SA342 M Gazelle, and that's a standard Airfix reboxed kit but with an additional sprue, which incorporates uh, the sights for the upper decking of the cockpit and the tow missiles. Um, as I said, that was 13 to, to 21 pound. In 150th scale, Heller do quite a nice SA341 and an SA342 L Gazelles and two separate boxings. They go for anything between 11 and 32 pound. But the Heller model has been repackaged by a company called Kova Savodi Prostajove or KP Models. And the decals that come with that kit are really quite nice. And the Heller kit itself originally was a quite a nice option. But the, the KP Models version is of a Westland AS Mark I Gazelle, which is actually an HT Mark II SA 341C Gazelle from the Royal Air Force. And it retails about 16 to 18 pounds. It's a nice option, that one. In 148 scale, Fujimi did an SA 341B, a 341C, D, F, and a G variant of the Gazelle. They all retail in separate boxings from 17 to about 27 pounds. And Mr. Craft also did an SA 342L Gazelle for about 14 to 16 pounds. Now, the Fujimi kit has been reboxed by a company called Dexim as an SA341C Gazelle for about 25 to 30 quid. And the Fujimi Scalecraft model of the SA341 B, C, D, F and G variants, which are really just the same kit as the Fujimi original. Um, and there's no pricings available on that, but I have seen them here and there, but I've not seen them sell. Conclusions. Now, this is a fairly nice kit of the Gazelle, but it does suffer from being the first Gazelle kit on the market. It has two main issues. The first is that there's a total lack of detail in the filter section of the engine assembly. And the second is that the main rotor hub has this massive circular bearing on its top, which on the real helicopter it just isn't there. There is also a total lack of any control rods for the rotor shaft. Apart from this, however, it is a nicely detailed interior, and its airframe seems to be pretty accurate too. The decals state a helicopter from 1973, which is a little strange, as Middle Wallop didn't start to receive the Gazelle until about 1974. They were put into service as a replacement for the Bell 47G Sioux 
AH Mark I helicopter. And I have built this kit before many, many times, many years ago. And I do remember that some weight is required in the cockpit floor, as close to the front as possible. Otherwise, it stands on its tail. Models worthy of note are the 150th scale Heller kit offerings. It's as it's where well, to be honest with you it, it's pretty good all round but if you want a modern anti uh, sorry modern aac gazelle uh get the kp models rebox because it's really nice in 48 scale the fujimi kit is probably the better option as i've never seen a really good mr craft mold of anything ever released um, but in 72nd scale you only really have the airfix kit to choose from i hope this model uh, in inbox of you has been of some use um, if you have any queries questions just pop them in the comments i'll get back to you as soon as possible thanks for tuning in and uh, thanks for following my channel um, and i hope all your modeling projects are running very smooth and that you're staying safe out there thanks for tuning in for now and i'll see you for the next one Bye bye